great people to support our local kids. Um, you know, we have three tonight. Uh, first, welcome to the stage, everyone. Jacob Coots, give him a round of applause, you guys. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob. I'm here doing comedy for all of you. Hi Jacob. Let's get this night started. Uh, now I know most of you are here for the headliner David Waite. Uh, you guys all excited for him? Woo! <laughs> Unfortunately, because I'm here, you're all going to have to wait. <laughs> now, uh, if you've ever seen him though, he has really large muscles and it's because he lifts a lot of weights. <laughs> uh, well, if he doesn't look like it, he was born in Kuwait. Gosh, I, these puns are so bad, I like visibly see the pain on all of your faces. <laughs> Moving on though, I'd like to clarify something right off the bat. Everyone take a look at my shirt. Hero, hero. It does not say herpes. <laughs> it actually says National Heroes, and I'm wearing it in honor of my brother-in-law, who's currently enlisted in Japan. <laughs> it would be really funny, though, if it did say herpes. Uh, just imagine this. Hey, what branch of the military are you in? <laughs> herpes. We're the silent killers. <laughs> Uh, something that, uh, oh, I don't have my props. I need to get pudding real fast. Hold on. Wait, there's a props. I'm sorry. So, yes, lately I've been thinking about phrases we say that really make no sense. For instance, the proof is in the pudding. What? <laughs> well, like, if you're in a situation where you prove someone to be wrong, why are you replacing it in pudding? What does court case look like? Exactly. Now, sir, you brought forth some very convincing evidence, but we're going to need more proof. Oh, don't worry, Judge. I brought an entire snack pack of evidence. <laughs> no, the only thing that's proving anything in that pudding is that you may be an idiot. And that's just putting it lightly. Time <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me is it's time to throw in the towel. I'm just gonna demonstrate that. Nine thirty, it's about that time. Watch <laughs> out. And that's that. Uh, other phrases we say that I don't quite understand. Uh, I was worried sick about you. Uh, vote for Obama. <laughs> uh, something that's been driving me crazy lately is how pol politically correct America has become. You know, you can't say anything without offending someone nowadays. It's like, I, someone could compliment my outfit and I'd be like, yeah, thanks, I like the glasses, and I just picked up these black pants, and they'd be like, excuse me, sir, what century are we in? Those are African-American pants. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you make one joke about women being in the kitchen, just one, and you have a mob of angry feminists outside your door holding spatulas and flaming sandwiches. <laughs> Uh, or the severe like anti-bullying push that's come out recently. When I was in fifth through seventh grades, I was bullied like every day. People beat me up every day. And I can honestly say though, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I was, I was this like this short. I hair down to my. If I saw myself walking down the street, I'd probably beat me up too. You know. But bullying, when it has like a purpose and isn't like over the top, it just builds character and toughness. This current generation of kids is being raised on participation medals and they don't know how to defend themselves. I'd say that's just my two cents on the subject, but some bully stole all my money. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if cars were sexual things? You know, like, all the pieces for this happening are there. 
picture this. You're in your, you're in your house and you hear a lot of honking out in the driveway. Oh no. Your car is horny again. They want me to run down to the dealership and pick up a smart car for the truck. In this joke and in real life, smart cars are female. <laughs> Uh, like, turning on cars would be entirely different. You wouldn't even need keys, just nice words. Oh, you're so fuel efficient. Is that two tailpipes? Oh my. And like, each brand of cars essentially represents someone in society already, so it's perfect. Now you got... You got the Jeeps? They're prostitutes because they're abundant, and the older ones are trash. <laughs> Ferraris are that gorgeous woman that end up settling for some rich douchebag. I like that. Uh, lifted trucks, those are the guys that always try to pick up women. And let me say, they are annoying. Ladies, have you ever had a guy try and pick you up at a bar? You all deserve more respect. And if you agree with me, see me after the show so we can talk about it. <laughs> Moving on, we have Chevys, which are the people that think they're a 10, but are really like a 5. They're really average. Uh, Fords are unemployed people because they don't work. <laughs> and Priuses, they're the people you're not too sure about, you know. Uh, just a step above gingers. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> They're the kind of people that pull up to like a four-way stop and they're like, are we going that way, that way, or both ways? You know what I'm saying? I think that's all I have for you guys tonight. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. into less space <laughs> and sometimes they'll get really excited about something and they have so much energy it's just too much for their body so they have to get rid of it somehow so they have like a I don't know a seizure maybe <laughs> it looks like a seizure sounds like a seizure smells like a seizure but it's not a bad thing so I don't call it a seizure I like to call it a body party <laughs> it just it looks kind of like Sometimes. <laughs> Once, twice a week. <laughs> Chipotle! <laughs> and on the flip 
side of that, when you're laying in bed at night and you remember something embarrassing that you did and you just wish you hadn't done it, I have to lay down for this joke. It's like her. <laughs> when you're laying there and you're just, oh, why did I do that thing? I wish I hadn't done it. <laughs> that was it. All right. <laughs> Um, I don't really call that a body party because it's not a good thing. I just call that a seizure. Um, it's a close relative to the uh, post-pee shiver. I don't know if you're familiar with that. And this is, uh, now I'm going to segue into an embarrassing story about myself and why I have seizures about it at night. Um, about two years ago, when I was just a young and in high school, I don't know why I have to say that, I'm still in high school. But I, I was going to my friend's house, and it was like late at night, and it was really dark, and one of my friends was walking out that I hadn't seen for a while, and I could tell it was him by the outline of his body. He has a distinct body. And uh, I knew it was him, he didn't know it was me, so I just... I'm really awkward back then, so I just go in for a gentle hug. Don't say anything, I just hug him. 15 seconds. Let me give you an idea of what 15 seconds looks like. Uh, sir, can you please stand up? <laughs> If you were food, I'd want to put you inside me. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Swarton. Sometimes I do stand-up comedy at a Fusion. You should go to the next show, June 19th. Um, and we were rehearsing one night before the show, and there was this, it was like an audience of about five people. One was a, a little kid, three or four years old, and everyone was laughing at the jokes except him because he couldn't follow along. So we finally talked him in. We were like, what do you think is funny? And we talked him into going on stage, and this is the exact joke he told word for word. When my little brother eats a lot of candy, he farts. <laughs> and then he just walked off stage like that was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> His mom came a little later to pick him up and we thought it was funny so we told her and she laughed and she's like, he doesn't have a little brother. <laughs> He's the one that farts. <laughs> That joke's called kids are lying pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I had a kid call me a fat n-word. Literally, a fat n-word. I'm not censoring what he said, that's word for word what he said. Literally the only two insults that don't apply to me. <laughs> I told him that, and he was like, well, if you were black, you'd be a fat N-word. No, that's still only 50% correct. That's an F in the American school system. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed with kids is uh, they like to copy each other. The other day, a kid was raising his hand. So I looked over and was like, hey, what do you need? He was like, hey, what do you need? I was like, are you copying me? He's like, are you copying me? And I was like, stop copying me. He's like, stop copying me. And I was like, so I'm going to use him and I'm going to want to get him to get him. And he was like... <laughs> and then I was like, what are you going to do about it? And he was like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> so I kicked him in the trachea. <laughs> and that's the story of how I got fired at Parks and Rec. <laughs> I have one last 
joke for everyone. Last night, I was uh, rehearsing with Jared, and I asked him, what kind of jokes would this audience like? And he said, marriage jokes and sex jokes. True. I already covered a marriage joke. Now it's time for a sex joke. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm 17. I don't have a whole lot of personal experience to cover. I call this joke my first hand job. <laughs> it's just the title, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Before I ever received a hand job, I always thought it was the best possible thing a girl could do with her hands. It never occurred to me that she will never be able to do it as well as I can. <laughs> Just getting started too. <laughs> she uh oh crap, hold on. Give me a second. She might have watched like a tutorial video, maybe. I have years of experience. Or practiced on a banana. I don't know what it was. So we're laying in bed, and after two hours of cuddling and negotiating, I finally get her to try a little woodwork on me. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> so she gets going, and uh, she has no idea what she's doing. She's getting it, throwing it around like a Wii controller playing tennis. <laughs> This goes on for uh, 45 minutes. Yeah, you heard me. I said 45 minutes. She was not a quitter. Keep in mind, it's 5.30 in the morning, so she's falling asleep, bitch. And I finally, I give up. I'm like, all right, I'm, let, hand, let me do it. Hand over the controls. I know all the cheat codes. 30 seconds later, I uh, finish up her uh, woodshop project, and, uh, <laughs> up, right, left, down. <laughs> so I, I finish, and I didn't plan this out real well because I'm laying down. And just the buildup of 45 minutes and 30 seconds of sexual tension, and then the two hours of having a raging boner while I'm trying to talk to her. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it gets worse hanging there. And just, I'm reclined back in all that buildup when it finally finishes. The cum shot was so big, it hit me in the face. It landed just like this. <laughs> It's dark, so she has no idea that this is on my face. <laughs> I gave myself a facial. <laughs> Moral of the story, hand jobs are pointless. <laughs> my name is Jake Holmes. Thank you. Thank you.